to create a filter that suppresses both the low frequencies and the high frequencies, we can create a bandpass. One way of creating a bandpass is by cascading a high pass filter with the low pass filter. Cascading means here that the output of the first one is the input of the other one and therefore the transfer functions simply get multiplied. We can get the same result by using the low pass filter first and feeding the input of the high pass filter with the output of the low pass filter, which again is a cascade connection. We end up having the single zero from the high pass filter in the numerator and the denominator contains the pole of the high pass filter and the pole of the low pass filter. The multiplication of those two terms creates a term s powered by 2 and therefore we are speaking about a second order filter. This is one way of creating a bandpass and we will also have a look at how to create a bandpass a different way. Now for the Bode plot of that bandpass, we have the passband in the middle, both for the amplitude and for the phase. This is where the filter doesn't influence the input and leaves it straight on to the output to the best of its abilities. And as we can see, it influences the output signal mostly the closer we get to the borders of the passband where it is turning the face to minus 45 degrees here and plus 45 degrees there. And for the amplitude where I've just marked the two points, we are minus 3 dB down. And now for the bandpass, we have two stop bands, one for the low frequencies, where the face is getting turned by 90 degrees and the signal rises with plus 20 dB per decade, and at the high frequencies where the signal falls with minus 20 dB per decade and the phase is turned to minus 90 degrees. Note also when you connect a passive first order low pass and a passive first order high pass, the corner frequencies here and there are not the exact same ones as the ones you had for the individual filters as the output impedance of one of the filters is interacting with the input impedance of the other one and therefore we need to calculate the transfer function for the whole filter and we cannot derive those corner frequencies from the individual filters. Another way of creating a bandpass is with an LCR circuit where the inductor shorts the low frequencies but the capacitor blocks those and vice versa the high frequencies get blocked by the inductor and get shorted by the capacitor so it's either the inductor or the capacitor that doesn't let the signal through and only at the resonance frequency of the filter where the characteristic time constant is both of the elements would let the signal pass through and the resistor here is dominating the behavior of the filter. The behavior of those components, as I have just explained, defines our two stop bands. And we are left with the resistive behavior at the resonance frequency, which in case of the bandpass is also our pass band. The Bode plot is similar again with the stop bands at the low frequencies and the Q value of the filter has an influence on how far up we can define the stop band. The same goes for the stop band at the high frequencies, which is also reflected in the phase behavior. Typically, you would put the border between pass band and stop band where you have the minus 3 dBs. So for those graphs here, it is at different frequencies for the brown one here, for the purple one it's there, and for the red one it's higher, and the highest first corner frequency 
we have for the orange waveform and vice versa. For the low pass behavior of the band pass, first comes the orange, the red, the purple, and at the end, the brown one. The most extreme in that case is the one that we had from the cascaded connection, but you can definitely also design the cascaded band pass that it is more narrow. Depending on where our minus 3 dB frequencies are, we might have different pass bands for those different filters. The one for the purple waveform, for example, is here. And the pass band for the brown waveform is all the way out there. Furthermore, the quality factor also influences how fast the phase is changing, with the slowest change being for the lowest Q and the fastest change are in the vicinity of the middle of the corner frequencies for the highest Q values, in this case, 5. And then it's common for all bandpass filters that their phase is zero in the middle of the two corner frequencies. The inverse behavior from a band pass is a band stop. And you can achieve that by either stacking, so that is putting in zeros, or by paralleling the relevant ports of your filters. So that means, for example, for voltage transfer function, which is the most relevant ones for filters, you can sum up the voltages by stacking them on top of each other, like that. So putting them in series, but actually in integrated circuit design, it is very convenient to sum up currents and therefore the parallel connection is very handy for that as Kirchhoff's current law allows us to sum up the currents that flow into one node and then you would parallel two ports, for example, the input ports of a filter with the input port of another filter or the output ports of two filters. In that case, you can add up the transfer functions from a high pass and a low pass filter. And now assuming again that these are first order high passes and low passes, we have the transfer function of a first order high pass here and a first order low pass there. We can calculate the resulting transfer function of the band pass by multiplying the numerator of the high pass with the denominator from the low pass and vice versa. And we end up with the common denominator where the poles of those two filters are multiplied with each other. And the one zero from the high pass here is multiplied with the pole from the low pass in the numerator here. And the pole from the high pass is added to that. The multiplication of the two terms down here in the denominator, which contain the complex frequency S, give us the second order characteristic of the filter here. And we have also a second order numerator by the multiplication of those two terms here. So now we have the stop band in the middle and the two pass bands for low frequencies up to the first corner frequency and from the second corner frequency all the way up to infinity. Note that the middle of the two corner frequencies here, so we call that FC here. If we have FC1 over here and FC2 over there, then the middle is here on a logarithmic plot. That means that the corner frequency in the middle of the diagram is actually the square root of the multiplication of FC1 with FC2. In the pass bands towards the low frequency and the higher frequencies, ideally the filter leaves the input signal unchanged both in its amplitude and its phase, so that means ideally the phase is zero. But we can see that exactly at the two corner frequencies, FC1, 
we have already minus 45 degree phase shift. And at FC2, we still have plus 45 degree phase shift. Within the stop band, the phase is shifting from negative to positive. And the phase shift is zero in between the two corner frequencies. In this case here at our FC, which again is the square root of FC1 multiplied with FC2. Equally to the implementation of a band pass, we can also implement the band stop as an LCR circuit, where here the series connection of the inductor and the capacitor are resulting in the output voltage and the resistor is in between the input and the output voltage. For low frequencies, all the input voltage is across the capacitor and for high frequencies, all the input voltage is across the inductor. For our low frequencies, the inductor is a short, and for high frequencies, the capacitor is a short. In between, it's the resistor that defines the behavior of the circuit. Exactly as we had with the implementation through stacking or paralleling, we get a term here with the frequency squared in the numerator, and we have our characteristic polynome with the s squared in the denominator, and a term with s in the denominator and the leading one. For low and high frequencies, the impedances of the inductor and the capacitor are dominating the passband behavior. And at the resonance frequency, the resistor dominates the behavior of the filter and adjusts the Q value or the damping factor. Now, in case of a band stop, but also already in the band pass, the meaning bandwidth is very significant as it defines how far away the two different corner frequencies, so the two different points where the transfer function is crossing the minus 3D by A line, are from each other. So for the orange transfer function, it's in the middle here. And for the brown transfer function, those two points are all the way out here. And therefore, the bandwidth is much higher. But that also means that the quality factor is way lower. And you can read out the quality factor in a Bode plot from how high the peak is in the middle here. For the brown transfer function, that peak is rather low. And for the orange transfer function with the quality factor of 5, the peak is rather high compared to the 0 dB up here. Now, as soon as you deal with quality factors in filters that are 5 or even higher, you might actually experience a limit from how many points you put into the peak to display the peak. So if you're using LTSPICE or MATLAB or any other kind of simulation or calculation program, you might need more points to realistically represent the real behavior of that transfer function. In the two pass bands, the signal transfer function from the input to the output is ideally unchanged. So the amplitude of the transfer function is 0 dB and the phase is ideally 0 for low frequencies and high frequencies. And in the stop band, we are suppressing the signal and don't let it through to the output. And the phase is changing from negative to positive. For low Q values, the phase change is rather slow with rising frequency both below and above the corner frequency and for higher Q values like the orange one here with Q value of 5, the phase is changing rather rapidly. But in all cases, the phase in a bandstop filter is jumping from minus 90 to plus 90 in the case of the LCR implementation.